In this video, we're going to learn how to get our objects out of the Quixel system into Unity. Now, it would be a fair statement to say that in the last year, Unity has been developing at a very fast pace. And one of the issues with this would be that sometimes plugins can't keep up. The companies that create them aren't necessarily developing at the same speed. And we're going to take a look at this today because we're going to have to make some small changes to make sure that we get our items into Unity. Here we are back in Unity Hub, and you can see that I have no projects currently. Now let's go over to the new button. And I'm going to use Unity version 220.3.14. The next step should be very familiar to you. As soon as this opens, we're going to select the high definition pipeline. And now we need to make sure that we have a location for our files. You can see here that it's already set up because I've done this before, but I'll go ahead and click on it. And we can select a drive and go to the folder location that we want to store our project. And last but not least, we need a name for our project. I'm just going to call this project Exports. After you finish naming your project, just go to the lower right hand corner and click on the blue Create button. And after Unity is done creating your project, it will appear in your window. Now that we have Unity open, let's do some things to make some changes. The first thing is, I'm going to change the layout. I'm going to go to Window, Layouts, and select Wide. The user interface will take a second or two to update, and then you'll see the new layout. Let's go ahead and deselect this README file in the project window. Just click in any blank area, and it'll clear up this space in the inspector. Now let's go to the window menu, and we're going to open up the package manager. Since this is a new project, by default, it's going to show us the packages that are currently in our project. Now we want to go to the high definition RP, and as you can tell, it needs to be updated. So we're going to go down to the button that says update, and we're going to update this package. When it's done, you should see a green check mark appear. Now I see that the Visual Studio Editor also could be updated. Now I don't think this is required, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. This affects communication to your compiler, and it's never a bad thing having this current. As soon as this finishes, I'll close the window, and I want to make one change to the demo scene that Unity uses here. It's just a small adjustment. So I'm going to go to the hierarchy window. And I want to lower the intensity in the lighting section. So I'm going to select the sun and go and lower the intensity. This is just because typically it's way too bright. With the sun's intensity being so bright, it blows out all the details. And it's really not good for viewing assets. So as soon as we do this, we're then going to go ahead and save the scene and save the project. So go to File, and select Save to save the scene, and then File, Save Project to save the project. I'm going to leave Unity open and go ahead and open up Bridge now. We set up the Unity plugin in Bridge in the second video in this series, but now I'm going to go look at where we're storing all our assets for Bridge. If you go to Edit Settings, you can see that my library is stored at the D drive in the Megascans folder. Now let's go have a look at that folder. So I'm going to bring over a file browser, and you can see here that we're in the D drive, Megascans folder, and there's a support folder. So I'll open that up and then go to Plugins, go to Unity, and you'll see a couple versions of the plugin. But I want the newest one. So the newest one appears to be 3.13. And this is where our package file is. Now I can click on the file browser here. And it'll set the path. And I'll just right click and copy this path. Now that we know where the Unity package is, we can add it to our Unity project. 
So I'll go back to Unity, which is still open. And now I'm going to go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package. This will open up a file browser. Now, I've already tested this, so the path is there, but I'll add it again. I'll just click here, then right click and paste. And then when you hit enter, it will take you to where the package is. So you select the package and then click on open. In order for this version to work, there's going to be some things we need to deselect. If you go to the bottom there, you're going to see a section called Unity Packages. It has some JSON files. We need to deselect this Unity Packages and that's gonna deselect all of these. They currently no longer work with this version of Unity. So we'll go ahead and click Import and it'll process the files and you'll see the interface appear. Now that we have the interface, let's move it towards the center of the screen so we can see it a little easier. You wanna make sure Enable Plugin is turned on. This catches a lot of people off guard. If it's not on, the plugin's not going to work. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. If we go to the window menu, you'll see a Quixel menu now. And here is our interface that we just closed. And now let's enable HDRP features because this is an HD project. We can reopen the plugin now by just going to Window, Quixel, Megascans Importer, and we're ready to start importing things. Since the plugin is now set up and we have both programs open, we're ready to transfer objects or materials. We'll go over to Bridge. Now I'm going to go to the local section, which is what's on my local hard drive. And we'll find Mixer. And here you will find our example underscore 01 material that we made in a previous video. If we click on the material, you'll see a window open up on the right hand side. Now it has different icons to view it differently. Here's a 3D preview. You can even scroll around in the 3D preview. In the lower right of the interface, we have the resolution that we're going to export at. We have the export button, or you could use the icon that's on the material itself. Let's go ahead and click the export button. You'll see it say exporting to Unity in the upper right. And now we can actually go to Unity and after a couple seconds, you'll see it start to import. And there it goes. When it's done importing, it's going to make a folder called Surfaces in the project window. And there it is. Now we have an example one folder inside of the Surfaces folder. And if we go in here, we'll see that we have a folder for our textures. And here's all our textures and a folder with our material in it. Let's go ahead and move the plugin out of the way. And now we're gonna create a 3D plane. So we go to the game object menu, 3D object plane. And I'll just move it up so we can see it in the game viewport. That looks like it's probably pretty good. Now notice with it selected, it has a default material on it. We're going to drag and drop with the left mouse button our new material. And there you go. You now have the Quixel material that we painted in Mixer in Unity. With this setup, now you have the ability to transfer any Quixel material, any Quixel decal, or any of their objects and scans. Let's go ahead and test this by bringing over one of the 3D objects. I'm just going to put the plugin back in place. It's still active. We'll go back to bridge. And I'll go to the free section and we'll just pick a 3D asset and we'll export it. This is fine. Click on it and then we'll click the export. It'll take just a second. It's showing you it's exporting to Unity. And now we can go back to Unity. When this is done processing, we'll see a 3D Assets folder in the project window. 
And there it is. So we can go to the 3D Assets folder. Inside you'll see the Rock folder. And I'll just go to the Prefabs folder because it makes prefabs for us. And I'll drag this into the scene. So let me get the plugin out of the way. And we'll move over the screen and bring in the prefab. Now I'm going to scale it up because it's actually kind of a small object. And we'll move it around so we can get a better look at it. And that sun is still too bright. So let's rearrange things here and then go adjust that sunlight. I'll just close that. Drop the intensity a bit. There, now we can start to see the details of it. I'll go ahead and arrange the UI so we can get a little better look. Zoom in a little bit. Now the purpose of this tutorial was to get you access to more variety, more options. All of these things can now be brought into Gaia and they will allow you to make worlds that are uniquely your own. Lastly, I want to show you how to export this for other versions of Unity. Now, in the project window, we see the prefab for this rock. I'm just going to right click on it and go to export package. This will open up a window that has all the materials and texture maps that this asset needs. And we're going to export everything that it needs by clicking the export button. Now it's just a matter of finding a folder that you want to put it in. And I'm just going to put it in the same folder with our project. And now just give it a name. I'll call it Transfer Rock. Now I need to go back because I need to put an underscore there. So Transfer Underscore Rock. And that's it. All I have to do now is hit the Save button. You'll see it process and compress it into a single file. You can see here, Transfer Rock Unity Package. This can be used in any Unity HD project now. All you have to do is go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and import it. And that's the end of this series of videos. Now. In future videos, we'll actually take some of the skills we've learned here and use it to build a custom world.